Hey friends, welcome to Swing Instruction C. In Swing Instruction A and B, we've stacked upon the drills and the skills to get to this point. This point's a little more technical, so unless you're 100% confident with A and B, don't move on to this yet. Okay, so the very first thing that we're gonna cover is the hike. We got a little bit of feel for that standing pendulum swing, which is a great drill to improve the skill. But really the swing starts from a hike from the ground. And the reason, the overall reason I don't teach that first, uh, the swing from the ground, because all it takes is one not so great hike and that could totally change the experience to the negative, right? So we're gonna go ahead and teach you some skills on how to hike and start your swing safely, soundly, and effectively. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and have Brian find his setup for the swing. He is gonna go ahead and get set up in a nice strong hike position, just so you guys can see that. So from here, he got just far away from, uh, enough away from that bell that when he tilted it toward him, he got his lats packed. He's connecting himself all the way down to his feet. And as we talked about the hinge position, shoulders are above hips, hips are above knees, hamstrings are loaded. As soon as he hikes that bell, if he maintains this position, he's ready to stand ballistically and get started uh, in his swing. So go ahead and come out of that, Bri. Some of the mistakes that we may see out there is during the setup is having that bell too far away from his, his body, therefore him not being able to fully connect with the kettlebell before the hike. So go ahead and just kind of demo um, what would be too far away from the body. So he's flayed out there. His hips are sitting here way back. Hiking from this position is not gonna be effective. He's gonna kind of lose his balance, right? So really the depth or how far that way a bell is from your base is hugely important. So come out of that real quick. Show them the right way one more time, Bri. There you go. Just enough distance that you can uh, get set in this position, feel it, own it. And if this position is uncomfortable staying here for a while, you should probably stay here for a while, right? Feel this. I mean, this can be a drill just in itself, just sitting here for 10, 15 seconds, just feeling this setup position. Let's go ahead and come out of that, Bri. Shake that out a little bit. Remember, guys, we're going to be finding a lot of tension in this stuff. So if you're following along, you know, relax a little bit and find it. So the next phase, once he's found that connection, it's called a hike pass, um, very similar to, to a fo football, right? The, the center, you know, blue 42 said hike. It's all about getting that bell um, from the ground up into his hips and finding that connection right now, right? So what we're gonna do to fill this is we're gonna just do a few hike and parks, right? So hike it, feel the connection, park it right to where it came from and go ahead and incorporate that breathing, right? So that breathing that we've been learning, when he hikes, he's gonna sniff in to support the core. And as he parks, he's just gonna do that quick little power exhale. It's gonna be shorter than our normal breathing, but this is just to fill the hike. So go ahead, get set up, Bri. Just give me three hikes and parks. One, two, three. Good, come out of that. So as you noticed, as he was doing that hike, he maintained that hinge position, right? Now, the com some of the common mistakes in the hike is, is meeting the bell halfway during the hike, which would be kind of coming out of your hinge too soon um, and losing that nice ballistic setup that you had, right? So go ahead and do a couple hikes where you're meeting the bell halfway. So he's losing his hinge during the hike. Therefore, he's making his um, connection not as effective. So go ahead, sh uh, shake that out. You can get away with that, but it's not recommended, right? The one thing that you cannot get away with when you hike is the shoulders following the bell, right? So I don't even like to demo these, but um, Brian's a superstar. So you don't wanna demo these bad reps at home, guys. The reason we're doing this is kind of show you the difference here, right? So, right? so Brian, go ahead and try a couple hikes where your shoulders follow the bell through the hole. There you go. So you notice he's losing his hinge. His shoulders are dr dr uh, dropping below his hips. If he were to stand ballistically from that position, go ahead and relax. Potential problems, Houston, right? We don't want to go there, right? So once you've established this nice hike, the next phase is going to what we call the power swing, which is a one rep swing. And this is where we put all that power, grace, and patience, and all that standing, planking, and breathing all together for one full kettlebell rep. Um, so his mission here is he's going to get set. He's going to feel that connection. 
He's going to hike, maintain his hinge, stand ballistically. The bell's just going to float away from his body while he's planking. He's going to keep his glutes on, stay patient until the last second, re-hike, park the bell. Ideally, he lands it in the exact same position he started. So go ahead and give me three one-rep power swings. Make sure to spend some time in the hole getting set up. So he's nice and set up. Everything is connected. Hike and power swing. Nice. Breathing matches his hips, right? There you go. One more. Boom. And shake it out. So Brian has been doing this stuff a long time. So every time he landed that bell, he landed in a packed and ready position for the next rep. When you're doing this stuff, especially when you're doing multiple reps, it's easy to get into a point where you're not finding that exact setup for the next rep. So for instance, we got this nice setup here. Hike, stand, hike. If you let that bell get away from you, before you go into your next rep, fix that shit, right? Do not hike from a bad position. So I always recommend when you're doing this stuff, spend a couple seconds in that first position, make sure everything feels good, download that into your system that, hey, bo hey body, this is what I want you to find. Go through your rep, as you land it, stick the landing. Always, always downloading good information into the body. Of course you're gonna have some less than perfect reps, that's obvious, but you wanna try and minimize those. And if it does go slightly south, fix it before the next rep. You always wanna grease the groove with the best technique you possibly can, right? So. Anyways, we got that hike. He maintained that nice position. Um, he got that power swing. He practiced his power, grace, patience, breathing, rooting, planking, all that stuff. So all that's really left is to go through the whole swing, right? Um, it's just putting this all together. And basically all that was, you've already did the standing swing, right? So basically it's adding the power swing, wham, and then just playing that simple game that you learned earlier, right? Don't overthink it. Just kind of let it happen, right? So go ahead and get set up. Knock out a, let's just say a set of five swings and let's see what happens. Nice and rooted. Knees are tracking the toes. Nice and connected. Breathing with those hips. Bell's just floating up there. Nice long arms. Good. Awesome. So what you'll see out there a lot in the YouTube university world or, or, or people that are not practicing their swings as a skill, they're maybe using this as, a, as an accessory move in some type of workout, but there's a lot that goes into getting the most out of this exercise. This is the only exercise that I've ever done that the better I've gotten at it, the more physically demanding it is. So small little things, I told him to keep his arms long there, or he was keeping his long, arms long, and I just kind of reiterated that, is that the travel of the kettlebell, when you leave your hips, you want these nice long arms because that, the arc of that bell is away from your body. So you have to plank harder. You have to keep your glutes on or you fall on your face, right? So if you do the swing and instantly you bend your arms like this, the travel of the bell is going up. So therefore you don't have to work that hard. What you wanna do is you wanna keep these nice long arms. When, when we're swinging, we're literally thinking about throwing that bell that way but our body and our lats and our core and our rooting and all that stuff is keeping us from following the bell. If we shorten the distance to go straight up, we don't have to plank at all, really, right? So to get the most out of the swing, nice long arms, right? So let's do another set of five. Keep those nice long arms, put it all together and show these folks how it's done. Nice connection. He takes time to make sure he's golden. Then he goes, good. He's just driving that bell across the room. At the top, his core's on, his glutes are on, his quads are on. Basically, that standing plank we've been talking about, right? So the mastery of the swing is, is getting to a point where you don't even think about the bell. All you're doing is focusing on this hinge pattern and the bell reacts appropriately to what you're doing. Um, what you'll see out there a lot, and I'll go ahead and demo this one. I like him too much to put him in a hazardous position, is using your arms too much in the swing. You'll see this out there where people are lifting and pulling and doing all this stuff, right? That's not the swing. The swing is getting the connection here and using your body to 
make that bell float off of it. It's not a lifting upright row, a row exercise. You can do that with your dumbbells, whatever, I don't care. But with the swing, find the connection, plank, the bell will react appropriately, right? Don't think a whole lot about pulling it or doing anything like that, right? Just allow that action to happen via a beautiful hinge and a ballistic stand. And the, you know, and the swing literally is uh, an inch wide and a mile deep. I mean, we can go into this stuff so deep, but these are you know, the general basics of it. And if you practice the basics, as you're on that quest to perfection, you're gonna be practicing perfectly safe, right? A perfect swing is really hard to do. There's so many skills involved in it, but these are the little foundations through this A, B, and C that are gonna get you practicing safely, you know, on your journey toward your most perfect swing. So basically, that kind of wraps up the swing instruction C. Um, stay strong, always back step if you get lost, you know, start at the deadlift if you, if you lose it, right? You know, and just re-drill this stuff. That's why we made these, to constantly continue your practice, give you something to go back to when you need it. So practice these things as many times as you need to before you move on to the next version uh, or the next progression. Um, it will pay dividends later um, uh, in your overall results by honing the skills first. So that wraps up C. Thank you.